2019. Uh, past uh, assistant area uh, to uh, 28 director of uh, program uh, quality and took many other leadership role in postmasters uh, a part of many socio cultural organization uh, active member of i uh, uh, icc icpf under embassy of india uh, a good trainer uh, anchor motivational speaker and she also has conducted many motivational sessions in india and qatar uh, Ms. Shiv, uh, Sabina, it's my privilege and honor to uh, invite you for the session. Over to you. Thank you, Engineer Arjun, for such a nice introduction. Very warm good evening to everyone. It's my great pleasure to be the presenter of this evening on behalf of GECW Bangalore chapter. Today, uh, we are going to, going to have a session on ethical hacking techniques. You might be thinking why and how, right? Let me try to share my screen. Can you see the screen? Is it visible? Yeah. OK. Ethical hacking. Before starting ethical hacking, I would like to give a quick uh, glance about cyber security and the importance the entire world is on tip of our finger you can order or you can avail any service or product with a touch that is the situation of the world especially during this covid 19 pandemic situation which has brought to us or glued us into the screen where we the delivery mode of the world has changed so this is the time of the, hour, the need of the hour. Maybe you can say the cyber security is in its utmost need. So this cyber security and importance, you know that our children or adults, whoever having an internet connection are exposed to the data exploits. Data can be anything through your mobile device, tablet, computer, anything. This exploits are very usual in every field, whether it is commercial or personal, regardless of the nature of the data, it's under exploits. So here, we are not spending too much time on this exploits. Let me take you to quickly to the ethical hacking. Ethical hacking states that it's a practice involving deployment of hacking techniques to identify vulnerabilities in a given information system software or program you might think for example suppose i am working or you are working as a uh, working in a bank just imagine yourself uh, and uh, you want to test the strength or weakness of your own system banking system or software then the banking software system, uh, banking management or owners will hire ethical hackers to check the weakness and strength of their system. Here, ethical hacking, you might also ask why just for checking the vulnerability we need to have an ethical hacker. It's not like that. The main, the why question answer many points actually. It is to identify the risk or identifying the business criticality because it's affecting the entire business as, it, as a whole. And further to protect it after finding remedies. And, you, and also to detect whether a ethical hacker would basically or not. So, and the response and whether people work on incident handling and then to find out precaution and recovery as needed to our system or anything. You can think, now in order to understand this topic, please uh, visualize yourself, um, working or a scenario where um, there is an online railway reservation ticket or banking system or um, maybe a, um, a country's uh, ministry of internal affairs or some important uh, data something so you will get to understand uh, why it is important and here in this session it's mostly explaining the techniques or the steps involved in the ethical hacking so ethical hacking is something which we ourselves hack our system to check the vulnerability and the strength of our own system. And uh, usually the companies, they hire uh, professionals just for this purpose. 
Um, so the main steps include collecting information from target websites, example like session ID, platform information, what technology they are using, what software, operating system, organization details like email, phone number, the customer demographics, or anything. You see, it can be. I'm, I have used some terms. It might not be exactly the same. Like this is just a. Um, term only new advanced technology or new comp companies they have their own tools customized tools available here uh, using firebug bug means it's an add-on web data extractor which demonstrates steps of recognizing that is the first step collecting the information using second step is udp and this is uh, i hope most of you might have a basic understanding of the networking computer networking so user diagram protocol and transmission control protocol are the two protocols in the uh, uh, network so it's packet crafting technique using some um, commands like we, you might be already familiar ping command like, like communicate from one ip to other ip or one station with other station similarly h ping 3 command is a command used for packet crafting technique the third step is gaining windows 8 or any other machine whatever you are using i use specifically one name for you to understand what is happening access using meta exploit exploitation toolkit there are plenty of tools available nowadays uh, in market and, and even customize some of them they don't even um, reveal the name of the tools actually you can just go to google or youtube or anywhere some tools related to this you can get n number of examples so maintaining access to system using spy tech and spy agent so once we have a collected information then packet crafting happens then gaining access then maintain the acquired access using some spy tech and spy agent i know you will not understand if i explain n number of times using a powerpoint presentation uh, when i was very curious about this topic i have done a course uh, with the great campus online university uh, i would be really happy to show some of those uh, uh, because there are simulations are there some simulations which will quickly help us to understand i will share with that also with you some video simulations and real scenario it's actually required to have two three station established connection but I, it might take a longer time than 40 45 minutes so what i have done is i have um, taken some videos from my course and also to demonstrate or based on that so dear friends ethical hacker as an ethical hacker the first thing is how to think like a hacker so imagine now you are in front of us uh, in front of me to learn some basic techniques of the ethical hacking now all of us are thinking how to think like a hacker what hackers do that is the first thing so i welcome you all to the five basic steps of ethical hacking the first one information gathering reconnaissance footprinting i will explain more detail then scanning the host Get third one gain access and hack into the system fourth one hack into the network the entire network the last one maintain the access to the victim machine and then cover the tracks these are the basic five steps include in included in any hacking techniques so let's move on further to see first step recognizance ethical hackers first step towards hacking it's nothing but collecting network host or organization information um, you can you as I told you in the very beginning you have n number of tools just let us take for this time a firebug tool which access the website and gather information I will demonstrate you through a video then second one web data extractor collect email phone number any demographics uh, means further details from the uh, station or host now I will take you to a demo to an iLab it's a simulation actually but for the convenience of an online webinar uh, i have accommodated like a video collect information using firebug mozilla plugin 
it's like an add-on you know you can install an add-on to the mozilla or any browser so there are different tools are available for um, compatible for different browsers extract web data using web data extractor let's see what's happening let's imagine this is one of the website for web server whatever we need to we would like to hack okay so moviescop.com so you can see on the right top here a firebug tool okay so what happened the moment when you activate this plugin or add-ons into your browser it collects a lot of information. Let's see. I will take you to a video. Hope you can see that. Uh, I'm going to play a video. Just let me know if you can hear the sound or not. If not, please interrupt me. Hope you are seeing another screen uh, with heading demo on iLab. Let me show you the particular practical on top of adding tools like web data extract. So let me quickly move to the iLab. This is your iLab environment which you will get. Is it audible? Yeah. Yes, you are. Okay. Yes. So um, it's very, it's, it's self-explanatory itself. Let's play this video for three minutes. Get access once you will be uh, joining with uh, CEH course. And here you'll find the mission. CH is nothing but a certified hacker course available with Gray Campus Online University. You can see search a lot of you know institutions giving these courses and further on. Machines are available from server and client machines, which are connected with each other over network, and where you can do full fetch ethical hacking techniques test as well as the methodologies and the tools. Let me move with the first technique that what we are going to see right now, that will be your firewall. Now, Firebug is one of the tools which will collect information from the web applications. So let me quickly... So how Firebug add-on is collecting or gathering information from your web application. That is what we are going to see in this small video. Log into the machine. Once I'm inside the machine, let me move to the particular web browser. Mozilla Firefox. And let me connect to one of the websites which has been given from EC Council. www.moviescope.com And you can see here there is a tool called Firebug 2.0 and 11. So once you click on it, it will take you to one of the panel below to the screen. And you can see there is a view called console view. You need to enable it to see all the context. So what I want to do here by using this tool. So this tool will help me to make sure that what kind of vulnerability this website has. So I'll just refresh the website. And it has been warning me that uh, there is something related to its insecure connectivity, the network, the connectivity in application level, that is HTTP port level, which is insecure, which is uh, plain text or uh, data connections, all right, which is not HTTPS. Now, similar to that, you will find other informations also related to that. And as of lack of internet connectivity here, you can see uh, it is not able to visible the things. But yes, you can collect information from here. Apart from this, you can also collect information from the HTML page itself, the web application, what kind of content it has, what kind of source code it has, what kind of characteristic it is going to use, and many more things. Right? And let me move a few, few things forward, like scripts. Even you can enable the script. And you can see here, the number of scripts has been given on the particular panel itself. So you can check what this particular application is going to use here. And by going through this script, we can see different kind of vulnerabilities related to the programming languages. Or maybe you can say there will, there will be, mostly you will find the buffer over, overflow kind of things or loop kind of things you can see here. And you can find out the vulnerability out of it. There will be some DOMs as well as NET. Net is something which will give you the platform information related to this particular web application, which is on, on top of 
which server it is going to be running or what kind of a platform it is using. So let me do a refresh here. Now you can see there are multiple things has been opened. And if you look into here closely to the header, you can see here, first of all, it is using uh, somewhere around Windows NT machine 6.3, the user isn't. And apart from this, you can collect information. One of the information you can see, it is using ASP.NET programming language. That is one more information we have gathered. As well as we have gathered information about the server. What kind of server it is using? It is Microsoft IIS and the versions also even given. Now from here, I can even find out the vulnerability of the particular server. I can uh, start doing an attack. Now, apart from this information, this particular firework tool will give you many more information related to HTML tag, CSS, JavaScript, and etc. Images, right? Plugins. You can see here multiple plugin informations and media informations. And yeah. At the end, you will find cookies, uh, which, you, which you can enable. And if anyone is sending any information, like login credentials, like if I'll see, I'll just show you one of the credentials here. For example, someone has put like the credentials like Sam and the password is test. And once they will log in, cookie can have my the value. You can see the value which is given here can be used as to access to the particular website. So that will be something which where you do not even need the user ID password to log into a particular website. So that's what we are going to see uh, later in the classes. Friends, hope you are still there. Yeah. Uh, did you see that I am changing the screen and can you see my PowerPoint presentation now? Yes. Okay. So we have seen using the Firebug tool we, we were able to see a lot of things, including cookies, and without even needing the you login credentials, we are able to log into a desired website if wanted, right? Now, the moment when you gather the information using any of these tools, for example, Firebug, there are so many in the modern world now. The next thing is scanning, actually. So it's like scanning the live host uh, or scanning the um, port scanning because each of this function based on a port number right so open port closed port even banner uh, grabbing means as a platform about the operating system so vulnerability assessment like um, which level it has a vulnerability especially on operating system level or application level because the network topology it works on osi layers seven layers right hope you know that each layer has its own strength and weakness so it's scanning the entire thing, including the network topology. That is the second test step in a ethical hacking or any type of hacking. So let's move on to the demo or in iLab again, because without demonstrating, you won't understand what I'm saying, even if I keep on explaining in a PowerPoint presentation. So here we use the UDP and TCP packet crafting using HPing3 tool. Pink is a normal command which we used in many disk operating system or anywhere to see the um, you know uh, reply or responses uh, happening or communication is there between two hosts or IP addresses, right? Similarly, here we are using another uh, command, hping3, to establish the packet crafting. Let's see. Let's move to the iLab again and see how it's happening. Information on the platform information and the most important thing is the vulnerability assessment to find out the vulnerability and by using that vulnerability later stage we can do a system hack right so these are the information you need to collect and you need to build the network topology so you need to find out what kind of environment it is how the systems are connected together what kind of ports are open whether it is open or closed if it is open, whether it is filtered with any firewall, if it is a software firewall or hardware firewall, or it may be something, some monitoring tools are used, or there may be a honeypot device which is giving the information, the false information from the organization. Banner grabbing is something which is related to the operating system information, where the information has been collected the technological way, 
or which will help us to find out the vulnerability of a particular version of the operating system and enter into the platform and to do uh, for the attack states. Vulnerability assessment is not only about the operating system vulnerability, it may be uh, application level vulnerability or it may be something which is related to the hardware level, farmer level vulnerability or maybe kernel level vulnerability. So these all kind of vulnerability can be assessed. And as an ethical hacker, our task is to let the company know, let the particular organization know what kind of vulnerability their resources or their business criticals posters have and how soon they need to patch it or if, if or what kind of the bed scenario can be possible by using those kind of vulnerabilities. So those information we need to report and we need to submit as a penetration test. So here I'm going to show you some of the packet crafting techniques and uh, yeah I, I urge here that you must have some networking knowledge uh, to do this kind of labs and for scanning, uh, normally when we go for the CS topic, I basically start with training with the basic network concept. Here, you know, the demo also requires us some basic knowledge about the network, basic networking. Nothing, it's like a basic, you know, network layers and things. Most of us already know that, hope so. You also say have a seen. So here, you will see quickly in two minutes how it, exactly the packet crafting happening. So that you will be a familiarization with what exactly we are doing here in scanning technique. So let me go for the ILAC once again to run the scanning. Let me cancel this lab. So I'll be in the next topic so that I will be from here. Meanwhile, the lab will be set up. So let me tell you what exactly this uh, UDP and TCP packets are. Now UDP and TCP are the two different protocol of TCP IP. We call it, we call them the transport layer protocol. They are the logical end-to-end -end connectivity protocol, uh, which is transmitting all our data from the application layer to the endpoints, right? And this user datagram protocols are called, called as connection list protocols. So they do not wait for any acknowledgement. But in the other hand, TCP, transport, trans, transport control protocols, that is waiting for an acknowledgement from the receiver's, receiver's end. And there, there will be something called three-way second, which has happened to make the connectivity established. And that is where the hacker uses the flags. There are multiple flags you will find, like sync flag, you will find reset flag, you will find fin flag, you will find acknowledgement flag, you will find urgent flag, you will find push flag. These are the different different flag uses to make the communication. But hackers use these flags to find out whether a port is open or closed. Right. So there are multiple techniques out there to find out the port is open or closed. There are multiple uh, sync scan or maybe the UDP scan or you will, you will find some of the advanced scanning techniques related to XMAS scanning, inverse scan, SIL scan. Uh, there are many more scanning techniques are there which we are going to see in the scanning topic. So let me show you some of the scanning techniques related to UDP and TCP scan by using HPing 3 tools and the WireSark. WireSark is one of the monitoring tools. Uh, whatever he is talking about the wire uh, WireShark. WireShark is like a monitoring tool which we can install in any operating system in TFS file where it will keep on watching that. But here, as an ethical hacker, we do some tricks so that the user will not understand that the wire shark is being installed in the system or not. Let's see how we can do that using some small commands also. Things we are going to do in HPing 3 will be monitored by the wire shark too. So just to understand how the communication happens, how the packet crafting can be possible, how we can, how we can collect information by sending some crafted packet over UDP or TCP protocol. So let me show you here. So how exactly you can go for this protocol analysis or scanning, you can say. So let me connect quickly to the Kali Linux machine. Here, uh, the Kali Linux machine is a, uh, a very special machine with especially um, prepared for hacking purpose, so ethical hacking purpose. So it can, yeah, 
so it's uh, it's connect establish a connection with a uh, victim pc like any windows or linux or any pc so you will see how it's getting established a connection okay we will use the hp2 root and to the password let me quickly move to the application where you will find all the open source tools you will find which has been jotted down in this particular operating system now from here i'll go for information gathering then i'll go for one of the tool related to live host identification and hping3 let me make it full screen so there are few helps have been given even you can put help uh, to collect uh, to get the help section information how to use this particular tool now let me quickly log into the victim machine that will be windows 8.1 where i want to do some kind of scanning maybe tcp level scanning or udp level scanning and there i will run a wireshark just to check whatever scanning packets i am creating or whatever packets i am cracking whether it is uh, giving me the particular kind of packet or not from hp so just to checking purpose i'm just using the wireshark tool here so let's quickly install the wireshark tool here and let's see this is a victim computer actually the victim computer we are installing uh, the tool now wireshark oh we can crack tcp and udp packet let me go for sniffing sniffing tools wireshark and let me quickly install it it is just a sniffing tool only yeah yeah now you will see what's happening the moment when we in uh, complete the installation of wireshark the sniffing tool you can see such a thing happening to the victim computer okay Okay, so once the installation is over, so run the Wireshark tool. And this Wireshark tool is going to use one of the packet or promiscuous mode using uh, some kind of uh, protocols through which you can do the packet analysis. Or you can do not only packet analysis, you can do every particular level of analysis in the TCP IP protocol. So let me just put start. And let me move back to Kali Linux machine once it is running. So let me try to crack some of the packets. So first I'm going to crack one of the packet that is related to sync packet. So I'll put HP3. I'm going to scan a few of the ports of that particular machine, Windows 8.1 machine. And there are multiple ports. You will find 65,535 ports are available, but we are not going to scan that much port as of now. I'm going to scan 3000 ports so that we can check what are the ports are open for that particular machine. Let me put the IP address of the machine. Now you can see here. See, it's, I hope you understand. He is just scanning the ports, uh, first of the 3000 ports, uh, keeping the IP address of the victim machine, the Windows machine here. So the moment he runs this, you can see uh, the few information it has been pointed out so first of all it is telling what are the ports are open as of now and what kind of services it is running ftp uh, loc services netbios sctp microsoft d and yeah you can see there are flags which is running right now sync acknowledgement flag has been sent and that packet it is showing here and the ttl value it is showing how many hops it is in the same network that's why the hops has not been changed it is from the same network it is coming IP ID is one of the identification ID which says that uh, how many requests and response has already been done. Window size that will be for flow control and the length of the packet some bytes, 44 bytes. Similarly, even you can uh, perform a UDP packet crafting okay, on top of this machine by putting HPing 
three. And this time I'm going to use some technique of hacking. So this time I'm not going to use my own IP, my Kali Linux IP, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use some of the random IP address. So that can be possible on top of this Kali Linux machine. So over UDP attacks. So I'll go for random source, random source, and I'll put some data, 500 bytes, put enter. Now let it run. Let's examine it by moving to the Windows 8.1 machine. Let's let's do some analysis here. Port analysis. I can see there are lots of UDP ports are running. Hanging. It is now hanging. what I can do, I will stop this packet and let me examine one particular request and response. So let me double click on it. Let me make it full screen. You can see here. If you are familiar with TCP IP protocol suite, you will find the application layer where the PDU will be data. You can see the data which has sent over 500 bytes of data. And yes, after that, the transport layer, we have started with user datagram protocol and it has a length of 508 and there are some checksums, which is false as of now. And on top of that, there will be an internet layer, which is having IPv4 version, you can see the source IP is a random IP. It's not my machine's IP. It's not my Kali Linux machine's IP. It is a random IP from where that particular scanning method has happened. And the destination IP is the Windows 8.1 machine's IP. And you can see there are some of the flags which is enabled, right? Not set, some flags are not set here, but UDP you will not find any flag because it is your connection list protocol. TCP you will find some of the flags. Apart from that, you will find the Ethernet protocol layer where you will find the MAC address. You can see the source MAC and the destination MAC and the frame information. The flow control, the checksums and all those informations you can see here. Uh, this is where we can do protocol analysis or the packet analysis or TCP IP suite analysis over Wi-Fi. Let me uh, go for one more particular tool. Uh, in the same thing. So let me restart the things. So let me move back to Kali Linux again. Let me stop the previous scanning. Let me move back again to Windows just to refresh the WhatsApp. Okay, so this time let me do one of the TCP sync flood scan. So I want to do a flood. I want to do an attack where it will hang the machine, right? So let me do a flood flood attack. So let me go to Kali Linux once again. And let me try to run the program. 172, 17, And this time I'll pass the option parameter that is flood and press enter. Now, in a few seconds, the machine, the Windows 8.1 machine, you will find it's, which will be, it's kind of DOS attack, you can say, which is uh, stop providing the services. It is, it is going to be hacked. So friends, you saw that it's uh, after the command has given us a flood, flood attack, the com all the communication that were happening in the victim computer, which in this case is a Windows computer, has stopped. Now let's move to the uh, next three steps, step three and four, five. So the third step will gain access and hack into the system. Fourth step will hack into the entire network. Then last step will maintain the access to the victim machine and then cover the tracks. Let's see how we can do this. See here, gaining access means it can be through password cracking or like a privilege escalation. Like we are saying like uh, we are somebody who is supposed to access it or authorized to get an access and after that it needs to have a maintain maintain the acquired access so we use special tools like uh, rootkit spy kit there are a lot of other tools are available okay so then what will happen we'll cover the entire track while steganography and ntfs string this is the climax of the hacking actually how we are uh, 
attacking the NTFS string and clearing login also. That's not included. So let's see. Uh, let's go to the iLab again to see what is happening really. Okay, let's just do that. All right, I'm going to play this quickly to understand what is happening in the last three steps. Access to someone's machine, right? And by doing metasquared access or maybe by doing password cracking. Now, I want that whatever my tools, whatever Trojans, whatever malicious applications or whatever virus or worms are there in the machine I have deployed on the particular system or the host that should not be identified by the particular user. Or I want to run few scanning tools uh, to, per, to do for the scan to their network environment. So in such scenario, I can go for tools like NTF streaming, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to show you how the NTF streaming tools is going to work, right? How we can hide one particular application in a Windows machine or a server machine so that whenever you want, you can open that application and you can do scanning but that when user is going to see it, user will see it as a text file or it may be some service file which is part of the Windows machine. This is like a movie now. You, we all have reached the climax of the movie where you, you are like having a text file only but actually uh, in reality it's running the real scanning tool. So let's see how, uh, let's see quickly how it's happening. So let's see how it works. So let me just go for the tool called NTFS Streaming. I'll log into the Windows 2008 machine. Let me put the password. Enter. Okay. Now. Let me straight move to the C drive just to check what kind of file system it has because we need an NTFS file system. Obviously, Windows machine says all NTFS formatted file system. You can see here. Now, I'm going to create a folder here where I'll just give the name as NTFS. Okay. And inside this particular folder, I'm going to put one of the scanning tool. And basically, I'm going to hide one of the scanning tool, you can say, in this machine. I'll go for scanning tool. And then I'll go for one of the scanning tool, like super scan. Just copy this one. Go for NTFS. Now, go back to NTFS. And right click on it, go for command and then can you make uh okay you made it already? The file called readme dot txt. Basically I'm creating a text file. So Just, he, ha he has created a text file under the folder NTFS. So what is we are doing is we are creating a folder first called NTFS and using the uh, commands in the disk dose or command prompt, we are creating a simple text file there and uh, typing there something like this is like, uh, we are like uh, imitating like this is an important operating system file. If you delete it, something will, system will crash or something. So, uh, but uh, indirectly we can have a EXE of scanners tool there. Let's see how. Just to hide my application there in this text file. So let me put some content here. This is one of the system generated text file. By deletion, it can cross your system. Something I put, save it. 
So now we have a text file. Uh, now once you have done that, in TFS. Now go for list directory DIR. Yeah, you can, you can see there is a text file called readme.txt, which is of 85 bytes. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide this super scan two, which is part of this folder in TFS folder inside this text file. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type. And this thing only possible once you are into the system. I'm going to show you in the uh, classroom training how you can hack into the system and how you can uh, call a super scan. So this is a simple command that we can use uh, to run the super scan. So what C? Super scan 4.1.ex. OK, enter. Once you have done that, now again put dir just to list out whether it has created okay now what the, I, dir is a, just a small command in those just to list the you know like we are double clicking in a um, you know gui operating system in the disk operating system or cli we use dir to see so now you can see it's already there uh, super scan there i'm going to do i'm going to delete my tool which i don't need right now because this tool, if it will be directly there, uh, the user may find it like someone has attacked his machine. So I'm going to delete it. I'm going to delete from the recycle bin also. Let me delete it from the recycle bin also. Now the tool is completely deleted from the system. There is no such tool, right? I can find only the TXT file is there. Okay. Now let me do a link like a service, something called windows.exe file or something. Let me put MK link, MK link yeah. and windows.exe. This is one of the files I want to keep there in that location. And where I'll give the link to read.txt and super scan. That is my tool, which I have linked previously. .exe and press enter. Now the link has been created. Now, even if you'll go to the particular folder, you will find there is a file called windows.exe has been created here. Now, normally for a person, if you look into this location, you will find, okay, so there is some windows related file has been created. And if you will look into the txt file, it will show them, okay, so it's a system generated file, don't touch it, right? And you do not know what exactly it can do. So the hacker know what exactly it can do. So hacker is just going to run windows, the exe and here you go you have the super scan too and you can go for windows enumeration and you can enumerate any machines with their network so for example i'll go to one of the machine 172 17 19 61 that is one of the windows machines so i can enumerate it right so this is how it helps or this is how we can do cover the tracks we do maintain access we do gaining access, but the thumb rule is your scanning must be proper. You should know how to a vulnerable, how to find out the vulnerability. And as an ethical hacker, we do not do any illegal tasks. We let the company know if your system is vulnerable, this is what can be possible. You can show to the company or you can show to the organization. You can make a report out of it. You can penetration test it, right? So this is all about CEH. So if you have any query, uh, dear friends, that is the main five steps uh, included in a ethical hacking or any type of ethical hacking. So to summarize, um, yeah, this is, as I told you, this is from the Gray Campus you know, Online University. Here, to summarize, let me tell you, ethical hacking is uh, um, protect uh, hacking any system uh, to protect, in order to protect uh, the company system or organization system to see the vulnerabilities in the systems. So it's it, it's con uh, contain the five steps in all cases. So information gathering, scanning, gain access, hacking to the network, then maintaining access. So you might be thinking now, how um, uh, modern company, I can actually stop sharing this. All right. I hope I can see you now. Yeah. All right. Yeah, am I audible? Hello? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So you might be thinking uh, 
um, why this is so important because nowadays most of the companies have a hacking profession ethical hacker as a professional hired into the company to protect their own system and the hacker is responsible to make or customize the hacking tools which is not used by other companies or other competitors so if you go to google or any online portal or you can see a lot of examples which has been already uh, listed in the established hacking tools but more may important you know business holders they don't use those things maybe they use some of them but they customize it to accommodate their needs and uh, you know uh, requirements in such way they make sure their system uh, is protected from hackers so uh, whether it is a ethical hacking or a real hacker hacking into a any system banking system or communication system or, or government uh, portals the procedures or steps and techniques are same same so uh, the moment uh, we as a human become hacker uh, think about being uh, becoming a hacker or something understand that we are going to uh, spoil the the entire community by hacking that not only the, the that particular business so the cyber security cyber ethics uh, everything is connected to this portion so i'm not going through that all steps so let me conclude um, ethical hackers are professional working for the organization or the business to protect their own system so if you are interested in this field you have a lot of plenty of courses available even online nowadays you can get certified as a ethical hacker and advanced ethical hacker and you can get quickly hired as a professional ethical hacker in big, big companies um, so it's a kind of a, you know very interesting topic for everybody nowadays and nowadays it's more, uh, the scope is more than any before uh, that's all the conclusion and summary about the topic hope you understood some basic steps of ethical hacking if uh, you have any uh, uh, questions or queries uh, i'm here uh, if i can answer i will be happy to do that thank you thank you Arjun. yeah thank you uh, guys we'll go for a you know uh, question session It is the Q&A session. Now you can all, all ask your doubts and queries uh, directly through the mic or using chat box. Meanwhile, the others, please fill the form, feedback form, present in the chat box. Ma'am, we have a question in the chat box. Um, the question is, can you say about bug bounty? Bug bounty? Yeah. Bug bounty is a tool in the modern world, actually. It's a 360 package for the hacking, actually. Uh, I think a lot of people, uh, I'm not a professional hacker, but I can say um, it's uh, provide a complete solution for hacking. But I, people or uh, organization don't use this as it is. They do a lot of customization over it. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Hello. Yes, ma'am. You can continue. Yeah. So it's all about uh, uh, how the streaming and uh, information gathering and establishing the connections uh, and together as a round package uh, is done with this uh, technology. I have not used Bhagwandi, but I have read about it. Yeah. Any other questions? About bug bounty, what I have to say is uh, it's a complete uh, package uh, providing the uh, hacking solutions as a whole. You may ask any other question. We can discuss, uh, you know, because more questions like, for example, ethical, if you ask n number of questions, see, in nowadays, uh, 
more and more new things are coming whatever you learn hackers they compete each other to identify or discover invent new thing because uh, it should be the one which nobody else used before otherwise it's not good enough to be you know competing with the other business uh, that is why you you find like a lot of fancy names as a, uh, like a tool or as a technique uh, or as a whole but the uh, organization might not be using them all but the same technique they use actually yes any other questions or anything that we can uh, discuss Some questions are there in the chat box. Mm, Ma'am, there's another question. Um, can you say about OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities? I think uh, OWASP, as far as I know, it's uh, vulnerabilities regarding different aspects of a system, whether it is platform, uh, the codes, or the layers or the, the applications regarding anything. So I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not an expert actually, but I can tell you it's all about the, the, the vulnerabilities related to different aspects of any system. Uh, when we uh, think about hacking, uh, it's, uh, it's actually checking how quickly or easily I as a hacker or ethical hacker can get into the system. So the top 10 vulnerabilities uh, you can see, um, I think it's mostly uh, related to the platform, like operating system and the um, network topology it can be related to the connection established and the packet system or the protocols used for the communication and the software used to, uh, to, to work function or develop that particular application. Uh, how complicated or how uh, simple uh, your system is compared to the other systems. So that's a, that's that's what he, based on a, uh, you know hackers work all around to find a way to get in or intrude into our systems, especially O O O W A S S P. Uh, I, I have read an article like uh, uh, they have been uh, keen in, uh, keen to search on a particular uh, vulnerability, which is which might be more powerful in case of one system but might not be that powerfully related to the other system so if you see any system or application or program or business some systems you can see uh, vulnerability may be related to the platform or operating system but some other case it may be related to the infrastructure or some other business or the program it may be related to their port or their packet uh, system or anything so so it can be anything. So uh, we as a professional ethical hacker working for a business or a company, um, the main responsibility is to identify our own company's vulnerabilities. So in that case, you might need to go uh, different topics, especially nowadays, uh, uh, new, new things are coming. So you, you need to keep updated on uh, yourself and uh, to see which category or which part of the, our system is more vulnerable compared to others or other competitors in the market. Ma'am, uh, Rajesh, I'm sorry. Um, Midunti is asking uh, to say about dark web usage, bad sites, bad sites of dark web usage. Sorry, what is that again? Um, Bad, the bad sides of dark web usage. Bad sides of? Dark web usage. It is in the chat box. Please check. What's that chat box? Nikun? Can you see about the drawbacks of dark web usage you are seeing? Hello? Midun, I can see uh, there is something called uh, uh, dark web uh, usage, right? 
it's like going to see, it's, i hope it's the drawbacks of uh, dark web usage or bad sites uh, or dangerous things related to the uh, dark web usage uh, see here some see for example you can see some of them are virus you know some uh, websites uh, uh, they could infect your device with virus because uh, they are that much protected so a lot of different types of viruses to watch out for and if you're downloading something especially from a website or a unprotected url you might uh, know that fact that uh, all websites or urls are not trusted even though you look very trusted but they can have scripts or links which can lead, take you to any virus so um uh, the main disadvantages i think uh, it can exploit you know the a lot of threats into uh, your program and uh, it might also abuse like uh, you know for, because you know it's once the site or web, web portal is attacked by virus means it, it's it's in it, everything and anything right it's like you can do whatever you want so the bad side if you ask the bad sides of this type of thing means it's it's as we know anything what people do online you know and they are what we are not supposed to do like anything like unwanted use of threats or you know any harassing tracking child harassing bullying anything anything illegal anything can be you know it's it's actually illegal you know uh, that's what uh, yeah this is what very we need to be i remember when i was a student uh, curious to learn this um, hacking my teacher uh, my professor said you must learn uh cyber security and importance and uh, it uh, before you start learning hacking because we must uh, uh, educate our children or the generation what is the importance of uh, cyber security or how it protected our systems are if uh, um, internet policing is the how the, we have uh, in our society uh, you know the criminal and, and cyber crime is there you know it's uh, punishable uh, until unless um, we we are aware of it i think we are not eligible to study or practice a hacking techniques because the moment when we are uh, exposed to that or we learn or we uh, you know become an expert veteran in that area we feel like we are masters yeah we feel like we are masters we can uh, intrude into any website or any ip or any pc so uh, it's all about uh, how uh, we, we can find it's ethical or where we we know how we where is our limit right yes hello Um, uh, Midbun Ati is again asking about um, uh, by entering through a control, uncontrolled browsers like Tor uh, and etc. Uh, or other deep websites will make any issues. By entering? Um, through uncontrolled browsers like Tor or etc. Some other deep websites will make any issues. It will definitely because your system is... Uh... Uh, exposed to different cookies right uh, because a lot of unwanted things are down see whenever we go to any browser or a website we must understand what is happening to our computer system a lot of temporary files cookies are downloading and they are uh, available in our system until unless we uh, deliberately uh, delete it which is a real helping step for a hacker so hackers are looking all around you know is there any system like especially you know uh, downloaded with this particular cookies because some hacking softwares or tools are specially made to identify or catch a hook with that particular cookies only so when you go to some vulnerable website or this one what is happening unknowingly or knowingly you are giving a chance to the hacker to get into your system for example uh, for example you are keep on i mean suppose you are using a computer shared computer in your home and your father is working in 
in a ministry or maybe in a bank and you are just going you know some starts time and they are using it and playing or some other website or online games or some you know less important things where a lot of unwanted cookies vulnerable cookies are getting downloaded into that computer that's it that's it the hacker is looking for the moment you are going to a less secured website the cookies uh, coming to your site you, you you don't even imagine that vulnerability so that is a really helping channel for the ethical hacker to establish a connection once he established the connection with that particular ip address of that computer he can easily a hacker can get into your father's systems maybe your father have saved the password the you know he can get anything so be careful whenever you go to a shared computer and uh, not to go unwanted website and wanted or less secured websites this is what the precaution we need to uh, use and we need to teach our uh, upcoming uh, you know generations who are not even knowing, including my son he is playing everything like what is there a gary or roblox everything so i keep on what i i never allow him to touch my computer or i don't even touch his computer what does that means the moment which when i am uh, using his computer to log into my hot email just email or my office system or vp whatever it is uh, the same ip address we are using to to get established connection right so the ha potential hacker if this is a best chance so if you are really working in a, such an organization where the system needs to be protected and you're accountable and responsible for that means never ever use uh, other shared computer better you dedicate a pc for that and do and even in that pc you don't you make sure you don't watch play games or don't watch movies or whatever it is i mean it's a, it's a matter of uh, confidentiality security security is because the data data is the master in this world the moment when you give a chance it's gone out of our control yeah it is um so another question is to uh, it's not a question it's a request to suggest uh let me check once again mm. there are a lot of questions i think in the chat yes, some, yes, of them are, some of them are specifically asking about some hacking attack i i don't think it's like similar i i have you heard about a hacking happen to zoom you know and it's happening everywhere i don't know how many of you have heard about that already most of the question looks like different examples or scenarios happened or a special type of tool used so i don't think i mean we, we the, the thing i what i would suggest to you as a learner uh, is to learn the basic and generalize your law knowledge in on that topic because as you know there are different brands for anything in the world like a pen if you are purchasing hacking tools have different brands and versions and tools so uh, all of them are working on the same principle actually because if you for example i can see a question here it's all actually similar questions for me why because maybe you are um, not familiar with the, that particular name but believe me or not if you just put it in the google or any you know search engine to get an answer for that you can see it's just giving you an incident happened related to that name then give it taking you back again to the basic what is related to it so it's all about uh, you know if you if you want to learn something uh the as a beginner i i, I remember I, i was curious and i started with the cert, um, hacking certification in acting ch uh you can actually go to gray campus i can type in the i think you are familiar gray campus is a very good gray campus they are very cheap and uh, very professional and good quality gray campus provide uh, good courses related to hackers and some courses are free during the, i don't know if still free or not during the covid a lot of people were coming online in front of the pc uh, gray campus i was an enrolled member and i had got a lot of courses free of cost it really helped uh, us to understand the basics some of them available in youtube i don't know how much uh, but uh, yeah i can just a minute 
this one i think this video they posted in youtube what is that? yeah here we go yeah i'm pretty sure this video uh, was the most yeah i can share one link in the chat box uh, you can go to this link this is a video a basic of uh, hacking techniques it's around 45 minutes i think uh, you will see what is exactly happening then you go through uh, online portals and learn on it instead of uh, go, just uh, going with a name or a, an attack incident you know we have heard about in different countries different location different incidents and uh, related names right so i am not saying it has nothing to do with this but they are the good examples of how it has been happened so yeah that's all news or you know happening related to these topics yeah thank you thank you thank you so much for your time yeah if no more question i think nina we can end it up yeah sure uh, yeah thompson go on okay. Yeah, go on, go on, Tom. Yeah, this is, uh, this is, um, yeah. I'm going to take just uh, one minute here. I know uh, the time is up, but I just uh, uh, would like to share some feedback and a thought. May I go ahead? Yeah, please, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, uh, Ms. Sabina, for a wonderful uh, session today. And uh, I just remember when I started my career some many years ago, uh, out of interest, uh, we started an interest group in our company at that time, and uh, I continued in my own way. And uh, the, 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 some of the members, one guy, I came to know that he's a big guy in the UK now on cybersecurity, oh. who was a uh, uh, junior joint at that time uh, in our company, and uh, he's doing very well. So the, my, my just uh, to the student group here, my feedback is that the cybersecurity and uh, all these related areas are very, very important. And uh, career opportunities are immense. So thanks, Sabina, Ms. Samira, once again, for uh, 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 enlightening all of us uh, uh, today. But I would like to just touch upon one other unrelated thing right now. Uh, I remember in the last session, I had one or two sessions uh, some time ago to the same group. So I don't remember exactly if I had shared this thought, it's nothing technical. Uh, in the beginning, uh, Arjun told that uh, Ms. Sabina is a Toastmaster. And uh, I'm happy to highlight that uh, exact point. Guys, if you are listening to me, uh, there are 36 more people here right now, 36 people. Uh, Toastmasters is an important part of your career. I know Sabina might have uh, taken a lot of advantage from it. I'm also a Toastmaster in Bangalore. I attend uh, one of the best in the country, the club called LA 1924. I don't know which uh, club you attend, uh, ma'am. I have been part of uh, eight clubs, actually. Um, right now, I'm a division director. I have been in Toastmasters uh, past uh, six and a half years. And I don't see any reason to discontinue it. It's a continuous learning, and I enjoy it a lot, actually. Yeah. I have, was a member in Elite Toastmasters, uh, uh, Doha Toastmasters, Doha Advanced Toastmasters, uh, then uh, uh, Phoenix International Toastmasters, and uh, uh, there was a club called Laughter Yoga Toastmasters Club. I had took a membership there also and uh, i was part of uh, another club called excel toastmasters yeah. yeah yeah thanks for sharing that information so i was just uh, t telling about uh, uh, the importance of uh, joining a toastmaster guys and girls here in this group i know the challenges uh, of those who are from kerala i've seen that thing when i recruited the people from there and my colleagues here there's a challenge always of uh, uh, speaking english fluently and uh, uh, confidently and uh, effortless speech. I know it's a challenge for many of us uh, uh, from Kerala. Okay, so uh, Ms. Sabina has got uh, a lot of experience in that thing and you could reach out to her uh, later. I would suggest each one of you uh, to go and join a Toastmaster club in Kerala if it is there nearby. And nowadays all, everything is online. You don't have to go there uh, physically. Okay, so that will uh, help you immensely. And uh, uh, a lot of knowledge, technical knowledge, marks, everything is fine. But if you can't talk, and if you can't express, 
and if you can't ideate and if you can't communicate you are gone i'm telling you the competition in the city the city species is very much you're losing out so as a part of a giving back to the community uh ka is uh, giving a chance to a lot of people to listen to us our our experienced people to get a lot of uh, tons of knowledge in one hour that's why uh, arjun was telling this is a 23rd session we look up we'll be coming with more but along with it it is your responsibility to improve your language both spoken and uh, written i've seen some of the comments uh, uh, and questions in the chat box I, i'm sorry to tell you that you should be able to write clear english sabina has uh, some issue understanding what is the question about it's not clear don't write in chat or a uh, sms way sms language when you are in, in a formal uh, platform it should be clear if you can't write clear simple english you're gone you won't you won't be heard in 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 uh, in other platforms so i would encourage you guys write clearly and very nicely and uh, straightforward when you communicate the same way you should practice uh, to talk fluently and effortlessly and without mistakes that's a minimum requirement so i leave it to you uh, sorry to have taken a few minutes and this is my feedback to all the student community members here all the best guys and i'm sure you will take uh, it in the next level thank, thank you. you dr tomza thank you so much yeah over to you nina okay before that, before that arjun and uh, uh, mr tom rock george uh, I, I just want to thank uh, 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 government engineering college of Vinod, bangalore chapter for giving this opportunity to present this uh, session really thankful for accommodating the time and uh, really enjoyed uh, giving the session with you thank you hope to see you again uh, over to you uh, uh, nina thank you thank you thank you so much yeah. okay um we have come to an the end of an edifying webinar I would like to mention our deep sense of appreciation for Ms. Sabina for sharing your knowledge with us today. We are indeed privileged to have an eminent personality like you to, uh, with us. I would like to express our sincere thanks to GCW Alumni Association, especially Mr. Arjun Sundaration for this opportunity. I also extend my thanks to Shabisa and Tom sir for being with us here. I cannot thank everyone enough for your really big involvement and willingness to this webinar. I hope this webinar will help you in your future. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Uta, one more time. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. See you next.